This is the new router lift in my shop. This is the old router lift in my shop. The old router lift I built about five years ago in a video that you can find up there. The new one is an improvement on that. Rather than try to go through the entire process of building the router lift from start to finish, all in one video, I've decided to break this up into three or maybe four videos. The first one is this one, and it's gonna be about taking the old router lift out of the table saw looking at it to see what needs improvement and doing the design on the new one. The next video, I'll build the new one. And finally, I'll add some features to it. I think are really gonna bring router lifts up a notch in the world. I'm Ari Cardasis, and today we're building a router lift. So this is the old router lift. The design of it is straightforward and easy to build. It's sturdy, it's pretty precise, and it fits right here in the wing of the table saw. But there are some things wrong with it, so before we take it out, let's take a look. Let's start by looking at a cut, and before we even start cutting, you can see there's dust everywhere. Um, and as the cut starts going through, dust starts flying. Anything that's not shooting out of the top goes to the bottom, and then here, you can see it's getting caught on the edge of the plate, or I guess the edge of the table where the plate is down below a little bit. And that's a huge problem, that's really dangerous. So from up top, we can pull off the plate, insert plate. You can see there's a lot of dust that's accumulated here. The insert plate rests on these three points, which is an interesting choice. And there's no way to adjust the height so the dust collects on those points, making it very difficult. The dust gets in this recess here, which is where the socket fits to adjust the height, and that can clog up when it's raised all the way up. That can be a problem. The lifting mechanism is pretty sticky. It's given me a lot of grief on the drill. And that's because this is a threaded rod that I had lying around that's kind of bent and not in great shape. And the friction on these tracks is probably pretty significant. Okay, so let's take a look underneath and see what's happening. So when the carriage is low enough, you can access the thumb screws here, which is pretty easy. It hits this support plate on the bottom. You have to come in here and really loosen these a lot. Give it the slack that it needs to get out. That's really inconvenient, and I want to do something about that. All right, so let's take the whole thing out of the table. It's just held in there with eight or ten drywall screws, which are pretty easy to pull out. So here it is up on the bench. First of all, dust everywhere. Oops, let's give it a little shake. Everything looks like it's in pretty good condition. This I can't even turn by hand. It's bound up pretty good. Is it on the bottom or is it in the carriage? It took about an hour or two to get all these nuts that were corroded together, separated off, and finally get the carriage apart and release it from the main housing. So we got gunked up in there. You can see here how much the drill is struggling to get the leaf screw out. Looks like in the end it was a combination of dust buildup and corrosion from moisture on this T-nut. Combined with the fact that it's a threaded rod and not a lead screw, that was slowing everything down and binding up the carriage. And that basically gives me everything I need to start in on the new design. This is the old design. This part here is the runner that runs in the track. There's two big problems we have. One, the center of the router is really eccentric from the track. So this distance 
is like three and a half inches. So there's a lot of force on it this way because it's cantilevered out. The other big issue is the location of this lead screw, which is really right next to the bit. So even with dust collection, all this dust is getting swept away this way, a lot of it would still get in here. And that is probably the biggest issue we had. What we're gonna do is have a router here with our bit here. We're gonna keep the basic idea of clamping it on, but instead of having the track way back here, we're gonna put the tracks and the runners right here. And that keeps this center much more in line. So you don't have that cantilevering action. And then the lead screw, we're gonna bring way over here, put it behind something. So there'll be like a dust shield here. In that dust shield, we're gonna want a slot of some kind and then a bearing block that can lift the carriage up and down. One last thing is that the movable front piece of the carriage doesn't need to be as big. So these long screws can go like this. And the wing nuts can still be in the front like this, but having some slack in here helps a lot with getting the router in and out. So I did do one splurge on this project, which was to buy this lead screw on Amazon. It's got two of these bearings and this lead screw nut that just glides so easily, you don't even have to push on it. It's gonna reduce a lot of the friction that was introduced by the threaded rod in the previous iteration. I'm just gonna take a few minutes here to speed through the design process in Fusion 360 at about 20 times speed, maybe more. I think this is about three hours worth of design crammed into about three minutes. This is a sketch of the carriage and how that's gonna work. And then it's extruded up to take up some 3D space and you can start to see the bearing block there that's gonna be underneath the carriage and lifting it up. These are the tracks that rest on either side of the housing. And then I'm just putting a box around that. There's that thin piece in the middle there is the dust shield, which is gonna separate the router itself from the lifting mechanism. And then I can extrude up all these pieces of the housing and cut a slot in the back that's gonna allow the bearing block to pass through and keep the dust away from the lead screw. This is another little skirt piece that hangs off of the bearing block just to cover the hole underneath it when it's in the up position. There's a couple of pieces here that I'm drawing that attach the main carriage part to the bearing block and some holes that pass through both halves of the carriage that allow threaded rods to go in and clamp it all together. That's a dust port. Suck the dust out and there's the carriage moving up and down. We have to put a hole in the bearing block that's gonna accept the lead screw nut, which I'm pulling in here from McMaster. It's not exactly the one I ended up using, but it's uh, good enough for this purpose. And then above and below that, there's a couple of ledges. On those, we're gonna put these flange bearings, which again, aren't exactly right, but they're close enough. Um, on the top and the bottom of that, I'm putting some coupling nuts that will be able to uh, used to lift and lower and then at the bottom there you see I just pulled that ledge out an extra couple of inches and the reason I'm doing that is because there's something that's going on to there that I'm going to be showing in a future video. I'm going to leave it there to keep the video from getting too long but if you want to find out what's going on with that ledge definitely subscribe to the channel and hit the like button and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.